I was able to get a little bit of work done on it last week, not as much as I was hoping. I worked from here to here. I actually started the binding off for the um, sleeves and everything right there. <laughs> so I didn't get as far as I would like. I've been distracted by other things. But isn't that beautiful? That's the back. Now what I showed you the picture of is the front. And yes, this is going to take me a long time to do, especially since it's made out of wool yarn. Um, we had a, a hot snap, and so for a couple days there I wasn't able to work on it because we didn't have our air conditioner in yet. I'm hoping it's not interfering too much with you hearing, hearing what I'm saying. Um, it's a one-room air conditioner, and we don't have central air, so I'm hoping it's not interfering too much. But... Um, because of the hot snap, I wasn't able to work with that as much as I wanted to. Too sticky. Now, another thing that I'm continuing to work on, I've worked on a little, not also not as much as I wanted to, um, my 10-stitch blanket by Frankie Brown. So, I, I, I know I started there last week. Yeah. So, I've made it that far from there to there. But that's okay. This is, does not have a deadline. This is for me. This is not, you know, anything super fancy. Uh, I have another chemo cap on my needles. I like this colorway. I can see boys and girls wearing these. In fact, my husband's getting ready to mail a box off. And this is, once again, in the Knit Picks Chroma Worsted. Um, this is the lakefront color. Sorry about that. Colorway. Look at those beautiful colors. I didn't tell you, um, the milkweed is out of Ella Ray Classic Heathers, and um, the Frankie's 10-stitch blanket is um, just miscellaneous leftover sock yarns. So, but uh, I like this hat. In fact, I'll probably finish it today or tomorrow. My husband has sent my yarn out to California for my California projects. So when I'm out there, you guys are going to see a whole new bunch of things that I'll be starting. Because I'm going to, I take a pair of socks with me for the plane because I can knit that pretty blindly. But I don't like to take things with patterns or things like that. So those stay home. Now, if you remember last week also, I was talking about my resolution this year to work colorway. And uh, so I'm doing the there and back again socks and you really you can't um, really appreciate the colorway in there until you see it in person look at that I've actually worked from where this marker is all the way up here where you start the top colorway isn't that beautiful these are going to be for me or my husband. He and I actually have the same size feet. He loves green. I, I might be a nice person and give them to him, but I will have to make myself another pair sometime. Isn't that gorgeous, though? So, um, now I've got a couple super secret projects that I will be, that I'm going to be talking about. Um, this is, oh, I should tell you. Um, there and back again. That's worked on nitpick stroll tweed. There's a link in my show notes on blogger. Um, that was in the forest heather and the oyster heather on size one needles. Okay. Um, I don't think I told you what size needles I did the 10 stitch blankets on. I'm, I did it in US 3, 3.0 millimeter. Now here is a super secret project that I'm making that I'm going to be posting on Napier's Knits to look for pattern testers. So you cannot see the pattern. These are my Uncle George socks. Okay. I told you I was trying to do something in honor of different relatives. This is my Uncle George sock. Um, to people who might be interested in pattern testing it, I'm going to put a link called Uncle George Socks um, on the Naturally Kim's Knitting Ravelry page. If you're interested in testing them, if you'd like to do socks, it's a very easy pattern, nothing too difficult with it. 
just go ahead and put your name in there and I'll make sure you get a copy before it opens up on the market, okay? These are nice. This is the in the Oatmeal Heather um, Knit Picks Stroll Tweed. But you don't have to do it in this. And they're size one. I have another super secret project that I'm sworn to secrecy about. So I'm not even going to show you any of it except my yarn. This is my food color yarn that I just had a blast with. I think I used every food color I had. And in fact, I let them over overrun each other. And oh, it is gorgeous. I may show you, as long as I don't show you the pattern at all, I want to show you how this is working up. Because I love this. Okay, you can't see the pattern. Just looks like a regular sock, except look how that works up. There's not really any pooling, which I'm glad. I mean, I didn't make it so it would pool. I really, this was like my third dyeing project that I did. And this was a food coloring. I'm loving it. But you can't see the sock until I get permission to show it to you. But right now, as far as I can tell, that's everything that is on my needles. Whoa. This might end up being a very fast podcast. Nothing's wrong with that. Now, if you remember... Um, I have been working on the Resu Katabira um, kimono from Knit Kimono 2, which was from that Bernat Cotton-ish in the Seersucker colorway. Well, I finished it, got it all sewn up, put it in the box to go to California, and I forgot to take a picture of it. So when I get out there, I will try to take a picture of it so that you guys can see what it looks like. It's it looks beautiful. I hope my daughter likes it. She likes that kind of thing, and I'm sure she will. The color is the most iffy thing because they didn't really have anything in greenish, and she really likes green. But um, the other thing that I have finished, I fin the other finished object I have this week, is a chemo cap. And of course, this is out of Chroma Worsted. I think this was the confetti colorway, but I'm not sure. And I use, do these on US 6, 4.5 millimeter. And I love these. Um, I, I have something else there that I've already finished. So let me just delete that real fast. Wow, this is going to be a fast, fast podcast. Oh, I should say there is something else I have finished. It's not a knit, knitting project, but I am um, getting preparations for my trip. I've been making my products one at a time. So yesterday I figured I better make myself a whole bottle of shampoo. I know I'll have to put it down in a four ounce container, but that's no problem. I have one of those. So I did that last night and usually I make it out of like um, oh, lavender and rosemary um, fragrances. Last night I did it out of lemongrass and orange. I put it, I washed my hair with it this morning, and oh my, I love that fragrance. So I have fallen in love with a new fragrance combination. I don't have it out here. It's in a a bottle that I've used for a long time. Well, it's in an herbal essence bottle that I've used for a long time. Um, actually, I've been doing homemade shampoo for over a year now, and I've used that same bottle the whole time. Um, today, I'm going to be making... Oh, I want to make some roll-on deodorant. I have the recipe for it. It's very easy. I cannot wait to try it. It actually came from Mountain Rose Herb. And you just use witch hazel, vegetable glycerin, and Himalayan pink salt. I cannot wait to try this. And then, of course, your fragrances. So I can't wait to try that, see how that works. Then I have to make, I want to make some deodorant powder in, um, in case this doesn't work and let's see my tooth powder I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to make for the trip I don't need lotion right now I've got plenty of lotion so got myself set I believe I have an order coming from them and I'm hoping it coming comes today because I need the rest of my things to make my to make my different objects so anyways that's what's been going on um, things that have been making me happy, 
I'm hoping right around here I can put a picture or two, if I can figure out how to do it, of some of my flowers. Because I keep talking about how my flowers and plants have been making me happy. Well, we went out this past weekend, and we, well, actually Memorial Day, and we weeded, and we weeded, and we weeded. And I came away such sore hands, but bless my husband, he kept it up, and he continued we weeding almost everything. And then I went out yesterday, and I did some more, but I have such <laughs> grass allergies that when I came back in, I had no voice last night, because, um... We've let the grass grow tall around some things, and I just decided I was tired of that, so I got out there and I started cutting it, and shouldn't do that. Or if I do, I should come in and, and take a bath immediately, just to get all the pollen off, because no voice last night. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> but I do love working in my garden. That's been making me happy. Being able to go outside and read and read. Um, it's been a little sticky to knit while I read outside, so I just read. And then, I, like I said before, I've been going on my whole 30, and I've been loving it. Um, I'm going to weigh myself, well, right before I do the podcast next week. Um, there won't quite be the next 30. It actually will be day 89. But when I go to, when, once I get on the plane... I don't want to be I don't want to be tied down to not eating because I don't have the right things with me and all this um, and once I get out there same thing I'm not too worried about exercise out there because my my daughter will keep me busy I have been exercising I did tell you guys last week that I would fill you in on that and I have been exercising um, I would say four out of four out of the last seven days I you know there's a couple days where I would too involved with other things and oops but so I am trying to more and more okay um, the things that I've been watching reading and listening to oh my goodness I have read my summer with Gramps oh it's such a cute book I like that book this little 13 year old boy um, is, goes to see his grandpa every day during summer break and while he's there, he's getting to know his grandpa better and better and better. And they become the best of friends. It is just so wonderful. That's my summer with Gramps. Oh, so good. Um, I didn't bring it over with me. Oops. I also have Jefferson's America. All these books are on my book review. Um, reading, writing, and so much more on Blogger. But, and there'll be links to them in Amazon. If you are into Jefferson, or how the United States was explored, or, or expanded, the whole history there, this is a super book. I'm a history buff, so I love anything that's historic. And this is. It's not, you know, yes, there are names and dates in there, but you need that to keep things straight. But it's not loaded down, so that's the only thing that you're seeing. I need to get a drink of water. Sorry. Um, like I said, I had no voice last night, so this is, <laughs> this is a lot better than, than that. I raved about Jefferson's America, except for one aspect, and it had nothing to do with the writing. It was all printing. When they printed it, from the second chapter back, there would be blotches of ink on the page. And when I read a book, I really get into it. If I can't get into the book, I shouldn't be reading it. And so I would get into this book, and there'd be a blotch of ink. And I'd be like, what? Was not happy about that at all. I did, I did write something about that in my review, and I sent a note to the publisher with that. Because... I'm hoping other copies weren't like that. Maybe mine was a fluke. But it's not good. I mean, you know. Then the last book that I read, and I really 
did not enjoy this book is Love is Something You Do. It's an excellent book. It's about this couple and it tells their life, excuse me, in ministry and what has brought them into ministry. And they were down in Haiti when the earthquake, big earthquake happened. They were already down there ministering and so they just stepped up and took, better, took even more care of everything. My only problem was they were listed as the, uh, as the author, but yet they wrote it in the third person almost all the way through. And that was just distracting to me. I couldn't get into it only because of that. That's not an issue for you. It's a good story. It's love is something you do. And it's, it's really good. It's just that not it wasn't my cup of tea. So hopefully, you know, you guys will like it. Now, as you know, I have been listening to The Hobbit while I garden. Finished it <laughs> yesterday. So, um, so today, if I do manage to go outside, I'm going to start listening to The Fellowship of the Rings. Fellowship of the Ring. It, um, by J.R.R. Tolkien. I, I love the book. I've already read the book. So, you know, listening to it and... I can't remember who it is that's doing the audio on it. I need to find out. Um, because the person that did The Hobbit on Audible did such a great job. I didn't feel like I was missing anything. He would sing when there were the song parts in there. He actually differentiated between the voices. and It was really good. Um, so I'm hoping The Fellowship of the Ring, I know it's a different narrator. I just don't know. Who, I don't remember who it is. I have to check that out. Um, now we're getting into what I've been watching. Well, you know, I finished all the free Downton Abbey's and I've told you before, my husband hadn't seen Downton Abbey. So while he was home this past weekend, I turned it on and he's watched the first three episodes of season one. And I think he likes it because he actually came in. And he doesn't ever just sit down on the floor and not do something. He came in and he sat down and he actually watched the ending of the, of the third episode before he went to bed. So I think he liked it. Now, um, I've also, I finished the, the Doctor Who, the Chris Frankelston ones, and I, I've just yesterday started the David Tennant seasons. So, yay. And I've told you I've got Amazon Prime and um, YouTube right now. I'll be getting Netflix soon. But I figured I might as well take advantage of Amazon Prime and watch something I've never watched before. So I start watching The Ghost Whisperer. I'm going to continue. I'm liking what I see. So I'm going to continue on with that. That's really good. And of course, my podcasts. I'm still not through catching up with Laura on the Dyer's Notebook. But she is teaching me so much that I have, to, I, even if I just watch the, the Ask the Dyer part, I, although I usually watch everything except for the show updates, or the store updates, because they're usually so old, I know, I don't want to get my hopes up to, ooh, I like that yarn, and then not be there. So I don't watch her shop updates, but I usually watch everything else. And I really, like I said, she's very, if you have any interest in dying whatsoever, I would say start with her first episode and just watch, because she encourages you. And I have... When I get back from California, I'm going to start, like I've said, I'm going to make my son a Gansey, well, a fisherman sweater, my own design, and then I'm going to make myself a sweater, hopefully a fisherman sweater, and make one for my husband. But I'm going to dye all the yarn myself. And then after that, once I make sure that I am pretty steady with my, my dyeing, and once I, my husband's going to make me a warping board so that I can um, do self-striping yarn. So that, at first I'm going to start with mainly solid colors, maybe some variegateds. I do like variegateds. And then eventually, hopefully, self-striping. But, um, so those will be for sale later on after I get the yarn dyed for my sweater, my husband's, and my son's sweater. So, but if you're interested in dyeing at all, Watch the Dyer's Notebook. She's wonderful. She's on YouTube. I think she, I, iTunes. She's on YouTube. I think that's it. But, you know. And then, of course, my Geeky Girls Knits. I love Cece. In fact, one of my super secret projects I'm working on is for her right now. Um, 
I love them as a as a pair, the mother and daughter, Cece and, and Dammy. Um, I love their stories. They live in my favorite city in the world. I, I should tell her that I mention her every single podcast. Just praises. That's the Geeky Girls Knits. Now, if you want to see her, her designs, um, her designs are in Java Pearl. J-A-V-A-P-U-R-L in Ravelry. And she has quite a few designs of her own. Many, many socks. She has a shawl. Um, I can't even think what all she's got. But, oh, she is. she's been my inspiration because I have been knitting for over 40 years. But it wasn't until I saw what she's been doing in such a shorter time that I actually, it inspired me to sp spread my wings and do the podcast, start dyeing yarn, start designing patterns. So anyways, okay. Um, I do have an announcement. Yesterday was the 31st. So I'm going to announce the winner of the Isla Jean shawl. It is Cheryl Sanders 10. Now, Cheryl, if you're out there, you need to notify me by the 7th. You need to um, go to Napier's Knits and PM me. Or you can email me and naturally Kim's Knitting at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Or um, you can leave me a, a note on my show notes. Just, you have to contact me. I need to know, um, you give me your email address and we will find out what your mailing address is. So you can send that to me and uh, I will, no, all I need is your email address. If I get your email address, I will send you a co the copy of the shawl. So Cheryl, if you're out there, you have till next Tuesday. Because like I said, I'm out of town then for five weeks. I will not be get, able to get it sent from out there. So I want it taken care of by the 7th. So contact me by then. Yay! Congratulations, Cheryl! Yay, yay, yay! And we are getting closer to 10 members on Ravelry. So once we have our 10 members, remember, I am going to have a drawing for this beautiful, beautiful yarn. So when we get 10, I will put, I will open a link and you can then Put your entries in and let me know what you think and you know we'll come up with some kind of something some kind of cue that you have to answer some question but anyways um any ideas for other giveaways any prize selections that you would like to send my way any anything like that please contact me um i'm always open contest ideas i would love to have those um, you can find me. I'm getting ready to close up now in case you can't tell. I'm just about right on time. Wow. You can find me on Ravelry as Napier's Knits and as Naturally Kim's Knitting. Twitter at KSNapier475. I will warn you, I do not get on Twitter as much as I used to. Instagram, now I'm always on there. Um, Instagram, I'm Knitting underscore Kim. YouTube, WordPress, um, blogger, all those, um, Naturally Kim's Knitting. Facebook, I have a Naturally Kim's Knitting group page, so you could go on there. Plus, also, there's Naturally Kim's Knitting at gmail.com. Now, if by any chance anybody would want to support me with a monthly donation, you could go to Patreon, and um, there's a link at the bottom of my blogger page. You can go to that link, and you can give one to three five dollars a month um depending what it, what people give the prizes increase anybody who gives five dollars a month will be eligible for a virtual knitting night with me sorry i'm haven't had caffeine i don't know why i'm bouncing so much um and anybody who would make a donation on on um, paypal to me there's a button on my blogger feel free to push that and once you donate to that, I'll also you'll also be eligible for a one-time virtual knitting night, depending on the amount. So, um, 
I mean, if anybody were to donate more than $5 the first time, I would adjust your virtual knitting night accordingly. I would love to have a virtual knitting night with you people. So anyways, I think that's it for me today. I think we'll get ready to go. I will talk to you. My next podcast will be... It'll be the week I get back. I think I'm coming back on a Wednesday, so I may not film until Thursday. Depending how jet lagged I am. I'll probably be so excited to talk to you people that, hey, um, I don't know how much thing, how many things I'll have to show you. It'll be a very short one. But anyway, so that will be when I come back in five weeks. Until then, keep checking out my Naturally Kim's Knitting podcast. I uh, podcast. Naturally Kim's Knitting blogger. That's, um, that's at, I gotta find the thing. Well, under Naturally Kim's Knitting. And there will be pictures of the things I'm doing. I'll try to put, I'll try to put entries every couple days if I can. So check that out. I'd love to hear comments on what you guys think. And I guess I'll be talking to you in five weeks. Yay. Have a great week. Hugs. Love you all. And happy, happy knitting. <laughs> Bye, everybody.